Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis. Welcome to this next video lesson. I'm going to talk about subs. A sub is a chunk of code that you call it and it doesn't return anything. That's different than a function. A function is something that you call and it will return some information to you. We'll talk about this whole thing about not returning and returning a little bit later when I actually uh, type in the name of the sub or type a sub. For right now, I just want you to understand a very general concept. There's a chunk of code that you can call that does not return anything. So we call those subs. So why don't I create a very simple program that lists uh, displaying uh, displays rather numbers in descending order based on the user number. So if the user enters the number 10 here, I will see 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Whatever the user enters, we are going to display that number and all of the other descending numbers all the way to 1. Okay. So I'm going to go to the code area. Oh, by the way, just so you know, uh, I created this text box. We're calling that txt user num. The button is btn submit. The label is lbl result. So I double click this. Here's the code area. Of course, I start off with my um, comments of declarations, get user input, and so forth and so on. And now let's think to ourselves, what will the user give to us? So if I go back to the form, looks like the user is going to give us an integer. So what we can do is we can just simply say dim user num as integer. What else is the user going to give to us? I think that's it. Now, what am I going to give to the user? Looks like I'm going to give them a display such as 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So what I'll do is I'll create a string. I'll put a string, and I'll set it to nothing at first, null. It doesn't have anything. Eventually, this is going to have numbers, and we'll say that we'll have spaces after those numbers. Okay, so in the get user input section, we're simply going to get the information from the text box. So that's going to be user num is going to be convert dot to int 32. So that we're backward compatible with older Windows versions. Um, whatever's inside that text box. So I type in txt, and already the Microsoft IntelliSense gives me what that text box should be. Double click it dot te, and you can see that text is one of those items that is listed. I'll just double click that. So I've got the user input. Now let's go to the calculation section. But before I, I go here, let's create a sub that decrements these numbers and displays them. So what I want you to do is to go to end sub, hit enter a couple of times. As you can see where my cursor is blinking at the bottom of the end sub and before end class. So this would be a major mistake. Don't do this. That's not good. Everything has to be enclosed within the class. So let me go back over here and put my cursor over here. Never type anything outside of the class. So we start off by typing the word sub. And then we have to come up with a name for the sub. Well, let's see here. This sub is supposed to display decrementing numbers. Why don't I just call it that? Display decrementing numbers. So what does this thing do? Well, I can read what it does. It displays decrementing numbers. In fact, let me put the letter S right here. Displays uh, decrementing numbers. Now, I'm going to put a parens over here. And now I have to determine, do you require something from me to do your job? Well, I think we better give it the user number. Right. In order for you to display decrementing numbers, you have to know what the user number is. So what we'll say is, and I'll, I'll get to this in just a moment. Notice that we have these two words, by ref and by val. Okay. I'll describe them in just a moment. Right now we'll just say by val. And I'll say uh, num parameter as integer. And then I'll press enter. Okay, so you need something in order to do your job. You need a parameter. You can't start de displaying decrementing numbers unless you know what number to start from. So I got to give that to you. Okay, what I'm going to give to you, that number that I'm going to give to you, you're going to call it number parameter. Now, back over here, what did we call it? User number. When I go home, 
My wife calls me honey. When I go home, my son calls me daddy. Are they both referring to the same person? Yeah, just different nomenclature, right? Just different identification. That's exactly what is happening here. Here in the main program, in our submit button, BTN submit click um, procedure, we are calling the number user num. Over here in this sub, we're going to call it numpar. Okay, so the nomenclature is different, but really we're talking about that same number. So that's the first thing for you to understand. The second thing is, what is this? So whenever you see the word by vowel, I want you to think copy and paste. Whenever you see the word by ref, I want you to think you sent me the original. Okay, so let me go back over here and type in by vowel. All right, imagine this. I was at a, a baseball game, and I, ha I, partic I had a particular kid that was a huge six-year-old, uh, almost a foot taller than all the other uh, players. It's you know, big parents. And so, accordingly, the opposing coach says, hey, hey, I need to do a birth certificate check on that kid to make sure that he really is a six-year-old, that I'm not stacking the deck with a bunch of seven- and eight-year-olds playing in the 6U division. So I pull out the certificate. Now, let me ask you, is that birth certificate the original certificate? Do you think that the parent gave me the original birth certificate? Probably not. They gave me a what? They gave me a copy of the original birth certificate. Don't you think that original birth certificate is probably in the safe of their home or maybe in the bank uh, uh, deposit, for example, in the, one of those safety boxes? You would never give the original birth certificate. That original is important. You give me a copy. That's exactly what this is. Don't give me the original. I have the original. Now, imagine that there is a line being drawn over here with an arrowhead over here. I will give you a copy so that when you modify the copy, it does not modify the original. I have the original. You have the copy. You manipulate this copy all that you want. And in fact, the copy that I'm going to give to you, I'm going to call it numpar. It's the same thing as this. It's just that when you change this, you are not changing this. We call this pass by value. Okay? Now, I'm going to skip the discussion of pass by reference for a future lecture. The only thing that I want you to understand right now is when you see this by value, you're thinking, oh, he sent me a copy. He copied something, and I'm getting the paste. I am not getting the original. I'm getting a copy of some other variable. Okay? So give me a copy. In my sub, I'm going to call it numpar, and then I can continue to manipulate it from here. All right. Our goal is to display decrement, decrementing numbers. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a counter. So I'll say counter as integer. Now, any time that you see this type of pattern, so check this out. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't think about this as numbers on a line. Think about this as numbers on a circle. So pretend that the number one is at the top of the circle. So you go around the loop and you just hit the one. You go around the loop and you just touch the two. The numbers are on the top of that circle. That's how I want you to think about this. Because look at the pattern that I'm making with my finger. It's this circular pattern. So whenever you see numbers like this progressing, you know that in your program you are going to create a looping structure, right? Look at this. One, two, three, four. How about this? If I type in 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. Again, notice the pattern. Starts with 10, and then I circle 8, and then I circle with my finger to the top 6. I circle with my finger to the top 4, so forth and so on. Hey, that's a loop, because I'm able to Decrement by 2 to get 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, so forth and so on. Okay, here's a tough one. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. I'll just say dot, dot, dot. This thing goes on. This is a famous sequence called the Fibonacci series. Uh, and check this out. 1 plus 1 is, 1 plus 2 is, 3, so forth and so on. 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8. It happens to be the Fibonacci series. We see this all the time in nature. 
right? Uh, the way that God created our earth, it's uh, mathematical, right? So uh, whenever we see the, whenever we see certain plants that have a certain spiral, they abide by the Fibonacci series. I remember when I was at Northrop, when I would create terrain for cloud, uh, terrain for uh, for uh, the surface of mountains or for farms or create clouds or create trees, I would use the Fibonacci series because that's what our world is created out of, right? Mathematics. So whenever you see this, think this. I'm drawing a circle with my finger in the air, right? These are numbers on a circle. These are not numbers on a line. Don't think of it like that. Because when you see this pattern, you think to yourself, oh, I'm just going to draw, I'm going to write a repetition structure. Okay, so I have this. Um, I'm going to be displaying items. Um, and so items like 10, space, 8, space, 6, so forth and so on. So maybe I should create a string, an output string. And I'll do this. See, that's what I did over here in the main program. But um, I don't think I need it here. I'm going to get rid of it here. Because I'm really doing it here. When I display the decrementing numbers, first of all, I have to get those decrementing numbers, and then I display it. So I guess I really don't need it here. I'm going to delete that, get rid of that space. I'll do that job over here as part of the sub. Okay, well, before we enter into a while statement, let's just set the counter to zero. And then I'll say while. Actually, before I do that, that's not right. Um, we have to display a number from the user number down to 1. So really what I should do is I should say counter is really numpar, the thing that you gave to me. Because I'm going to be just decrement, I'm going to be displaying down. Now I can say while the counter is greater than or equal to 1. Press enter, and then that'll create the end while statement. So here's my idea. The user gave me, let me just go ahead and put a comment over here and describe what I'm thinking. The user gave me the number 10. Okay, I need to now put a space and display the next number below 10. So 10 minus 1 is 9. Then I need to put a space and display the next number below 9, which is 8, and so forth and so on. All the way dot 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 to 1. Okay, so... I gave you the number 10. Pretend. Now now that number, I'm going to have you put it into a counter. Is 10 greater than or equal to 1? Yes. Okay. Display the number, display a space, and then decrement that number so that now counter is 9. Is 9 greater than or equal to 1? Yes. Okay. Display the 9 so that uh, the 9 and the space after that, and then take that 9 and decrement it by 1 so that becomes 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. All right, one. Is one greater than or equal to one? Yes. Okay, display it, and we'll put a space after it. Okay, and now decrement counter. That's going to be zero. Is zero greater than or equal to one? No, it's not. Stop counting. You've already created a string that has 10, 9, 8, 7, so all the way down to one. Then down here, we'll just simply send it to the, to the label. Okay. So let me put a little comment over here. And we'll say, um, generate uh, the decrementing numbers based on the user input. If the user gave me 10, then I'm going to have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. If the user gave me 3, 3, 2, 1, so forth and so on. Whatever the user number gave me, that is my starting point. So over here, what I'll do is this. I'll say output is going to be the old output. I'm going to concatenate that with whatever the number is. So that's going to be counter. And then I'm going to concatenate that with a space. So if the output, which is blank, okay, I'm going to concatenate that with the counter. Counter is, if say for example, if I give you 10, 10 is being placed into the counter. So that means that the 10 is going to be displayed, and then I have the space after that. Now, Visual Basic will take that and convert that into a string. 
if I wanted to be a purist, I would do this, convert dot to string whatever the counter is. So the previous code will work, but this is more explicit. This is telling the user you are taking a number and converting it to a string because you're concatenating it, concatenating it with other strings, namely output, which is a string, and namely this guy over here, which is a string. So I'll be explicit and do it this way, although you know that the previous version that I had also works. Okay, so this is displaying, if I sent 10, this is displaying 10 and a space. Next time around, I want to display 9 and a space, but to do that, I had better take that counter and decrement it. So counter is going to be equal to, or assigned, counter minus 1. So if it was 10, it's going to be 9. I go back over here. Is 9 greater than 1? Yes, it is. So now let's go over here to the output. And the old output, remember, that's got 10 and a space. We're going to concatenate that with a 9 and a space. That 9, we're going to decrement it. So now it's going to be an 8. Is 8 greater than or equal to 1? Yes. So remember what this guy is? 10 space, 9 space. We're going to concatenate that with an 8 and a space. And so now we take that 8, and now it becomes a 7, and so forth and so on. We keep on doing this. Eventually, this thing's going to be 1. Is 1 greater than or equal to 1? Yep, so we can concatenate that. 1 minus 1 is 0. Is 0 greater than 1? Greater than or equal to 1? No, it's not. So we are done with this little chunk of code, with the while statement. Remember, output has all of those numbers. So what I'm going to go ahead and do over here is I'm going to display output, display the variable, output to the label. Well, that label is LBL result dot text, and whatever output is, we're going to send it over here. So notice that this is a chunk of code. That chunk of code is given a name. What do we call it? Display decrementing numbers. You need something, display decrementing numbers, to do your job. What do you need? You need the user number, so I'm going to give it to you. And in your program, in your chunk of code, you're going to refer to it as number parameter or num parameter. When you finish, your job is to display a list of decrementing numbers. All right, so I've got to call this thing in order for it to do its job. Now, back over here in the calculation section, and in fact, really, this is kind of like a calculation slash output section. So I'll get rid of these comments and I'll say, really, we're doing both things over here. We're going to do, perform a calculation and an output by simply calling display decrementing numbers, and I'm going to send to you the user num. And that's it. That's the end of my program. What do you do? Well, you calculate all the decrementing numbers and you display them. Let me do this again. All I did was type in DIS, and already I could see that's the, the sub that I created. I double clicked it. When I put the parens, notice it gives me the parameters. You are expecting an integer. Now, in you, in your sub, you're going to call it number parameter. Who cares what you're going to call it? But I need to give you something. What do I need to give you? The user number, because that defines the starting number. And then we go down from there. Let me run the code, and then we'll stop the code step by step so we can analyze it. So over here, we have descending numbers. And I'll put the number 10. Submit, so notice how it displays numbers 10, 9, 8, all the way to 1. Let me try it again. How about 5? Um, how about 15? Probably going to wrap into the next line. That's fine. Okay. So we are displaying descending numbers. How did this work? So now what I want to do is I want to break the code so we can freeze time and analyze it. I want to put a break right here on line number 10. So don't execute this is what I'm telling Visual Basic. We're going to stop time here and then perform an analysis. Okay, so I'll start the code. Here's my program. Let me start off with something small, the number three. Click Submit. All right, so notice how that yellow arrow indicates that we are stopping the program at this point. Now, if I hover my mouse pointer on top of user number, you see the number three. We are about to call this function. You'll see these 
three buttons over here. Now, if you don't see these three buttons, then what you want to do is, if I right-click over here, you'll see that it says, actually, if I just simply go to the debug, sorry, debug windows, and then in uh, debug windows, you'll see, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, that's for, that's for something else, sorry, I was right. <laughs> if I right-click, and if I say, uh, is it debug? Yeah, there it is, right-click, and then if I select debug, here are the tools. If you don't see these, go next to help, right-click, and you want to make sure there's a check mark next to debug. Then you should see these. This one says step into, step over, step out. And you see that there are function buttons that are associated with them. F11, F10, F, uh, Shift F11. I want to step into this sub. So I'm going to click this guy. Watch what happens on the screen when I click this. Click step into and now see what happens. It stepped into that particular sub. Now, we took this user number and we gave it to this sub. Let me, let me see if that's true. Yep, there it is. NumPar is three. So remember the illustration I gave to you? I go home. My wife says, hi, honey. My son says, hi, daddy. So same value, right? Same, same thing that we just have a different nomenclature. Over here, we call it user num. Over here, we call it NumPar. So I'm giving you the number three. Now I can use this guy, step over. So we go through the declaration of the variables. I go over here. It looks like numpar is three. I am about to assign, assign that to counter. So let me step over. All right. Now we possibly are going to be performing a while loop as long as this thing is greater than one. Well, what is counter? Ah, counter is three. Is three greater than or equal to one? Yes. So when I step over, we go into the while statement. Output is currently nothing. Counter is three. We're going to concatenate a space. So over here, you see that output Output is nothing. When I step over, ah, now output is the number three and a space. We're going to take that counter, which is three, and decrement it by one. So now after this step, notice the counter is now two. So we've decremented it. We are at the bottom of our while loop. Shall we do this again? Well, as long as this condition is true, yes. Well, let's see. Two is two greater than or equal to one. Yes, it is. So we're going to do this again. I step into this. The output currently is three space. We are about to append to it two and then another space. So notice what output is three space, two space. Take that counter, decrement it by one. It was two, and now you can see that it's one. Shall we do this again? Well, as long as the counter is greater than or equal to one, which it is, one is greater than or equal to one. So once again, the output is going to be appended with the number one and a space. So there's our output. And then counter is going to be decremented by one. So now, is zero greater than or equal to one? No, that's no longer true. So watch what happens when I step over. We are no longer executing the while statement. We just jump out of there. So the next thing to do is to take this output variable and send it to the text property of the label. So let me just go ahead now, just simply say continue so we can see what happens with our program. And sure enough, there it is. Okay. So this is an example of creating a sub that receives a parameter. Maybe I should put a, a little comment up here. Um, this is a sub that receives a parameter. A sub is something that does not return anything. You call it, it does its job. Some subs require a parameter. Here it is. Other subs do not. Check this out. Let me delete that. This would be an example of a sub that does not receive anything. So this is a sub with no parameters. Now, as you can see, that's wreaking havoc on my program because I designed it in such a way as it should display something. So I'm going to undo, restore order to the universe. All right, and that's it. So this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope that this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. See you next time. Mm -hmm.